let's start so again we will try to finish everything about graphs in the session and uh, this is going to be the outline we will cover basic graphs that everyone should know how do you plot graphs so we will talk about how do we plot graphs then we will talk about the the number of solutions that is a very important area for your cat typically questions come from number of solutions of intersection of multiple graphs then growth rate of functions it's an important thing if you know it you can save your minus one a lot of students will make minus one in some of the questions that we will discuss but if you know this thing you will be able to convert minus one to plus three then integral solution again an important thing which typically students who don't know the tricks they will take three to five minutes in a question but if you know the trick you will take 30 seconds so we will discuss it same is the case with area under the curve if you don't know the trick you will end up spending four plus minutes but if you know it questions will be solvable in 30 seconds Okay, so yes, this is pretty much about whatever we will discuss today in graphs. So I won't spend much time here. Ideally, to plot a straight line, you need two two points, right? If you have two points, you can just join them, and then you can plot a line. A line is also a graph, and this is a straight line. Y is equals to mx plus c, or y is equals to ax plus b. I'm sure you all know how to plot. A graph of uh, say y is equals to two x plus three. How do we plot this? Slope is two, slope is positive. So angle from the positive x-axis has to be positive. So graph has to be tilted like this. So you just put the value. Say x equals to zero, value is three. So this is one point. Okay, zero comma three, and then this is how the graph is, right? Because it has to be tilted and it has to be straight line. If you have to find this intercept here, y is zero. So x has to be minus three by two. So you know two points, and then you can just plot the graph. That's it. Uh, everyone, just plot y equals to x plus seven very quickly. Just plot these two graphs in your notebook. It's a straight line. It's going to be a parabola. And anyone who has issues in plotting uh, in, in plotting these graphs, let me know now only, because I would expect everyone knows. How to plot the graph? If not, please let me know in comment right now so that I can explain. And let me know done once you have done it. Y equals to x plus seven. How do we plot it? Y equals to x is this, right? This is the graph of y equals to x. It is y equals to x plus seven. So you just move the graph seven units on the top. So this is the graph of y equals to x plus seven. Or what you can do is x equals to zero. The value is seven. So this is one point. And x equals to minus seven. The value is zero. These are the two points. You just join them with a scale, and this is the graph of y equals to x plus seven. Second is y equals to x square plus three. Same. It is a parabola because it is a quadratic function. So when x is zero, you know this is the graph of y equals to x square, right? How do we know this? It is an even function, right? I've already explained what is an even function. If you put x equals to minus x, the value does not change because it's a square of x, so it's an even function. So graph has to be symmetric about y-axis. So you just have to plot the positive x, and then you can just reciprocate the same on the negative x, and uh, you can just take some values. When x is zero, y is zero. X is one, y is one. X is two, y is four. So this is how is the graph for y equals to x square. Now it is y equals to x square plus three. So you just have to shift this graph by three units on the top because now when x is zero, y is equals to three. So you just shift this entire graph by three units on the top. So this is going to be the graph of y equals to x square plus three. Is everyone clear with this? Can we move ahead? So now next is a homework for everyone. You have to plot all of these graphs. Six, seven, eight, nine. You have five minutes. I'll give you five minutes. Plot. All of these graphs in your notebook, and if you are able to do this, your basics of graphs is pretty sorted. Even batch three students, guys, I know topic is not covered in your classes, but I am starting the topic from very basic. Let me know if you face any issues. Just let me know once it's done. R T X is basically root X. Anmol, it is Y is equals to under root of X. I'll just give the answers. Y is equals to X is we all know right how is y equals to x it is simply this is y equals to x y is equals to 2x will be uh, okay i may not be very neat in plotting the graph this is y equals to 2x 
I hope you all understand why is y equals to 2x above y equals to x because here slope is higher. So slope is nothing but 10 theta, 10 theta. So this is theta one and this is theta two. So because 10 theta is directly proportional to theta, the theta two has to be higher than theta one because its slope is higher. This is basic class 9, 10. If you have any issues, let me know. I'll try to explain it again. Y equals to two X is a, has a higher slope. So this graph is above this. Similarly, y equals to 3x will be even above this. This is how y equals to 3x will look like. Then y equals to x square will be this. Sorry. Yes, this is how the graph will look like for y equals to x square. y equals to x cube is an odd function. This is how the graph of y equals to x cube will look like. When x is positive, y is positive. When x is negative, y is negative. You can plot some values x equals to zero by y is zero and then plot this graph. This is y equals to x cube. This is y equals to x square. Now is an interesting graph y is equals to root x. So we knew for the fact that this graph only exists for x positive and y is also positive. So this graph only exists for the first quadrant. Now there are two possibilities, right? Either because see y equals to root x is nothing but y square equals to x, right? And y square equals to x. Kya hua? Y ki minus y dialogue. So graph remains same. So this is how is the graph for y square equals to x. I hope everyone understands how is this the graph for y square equals to x because what I've done is y square equals to x. This implies x has to be positive. So graph if positive x axis. Pe hoga. Then if you take y equals to minus y, graph remains same. So jo bhi upar hoga, same graph niche ho jayega. And then you can basically take some value x equals to one pair y is one x equals to four pair y is equals to two. So basically rate of change of x is higher than rate of change of y, right? Because y is equals to root x, right? So y will actually increase slowly as compared to x, which is why graph is like this and not like this. This will be the graph for y equals to x square because now y increases in double the growth rate of x, right? because y is equals to x square. So I'll repeat again what I'm saying when x is one, y is one, when x is two, y is four. So x to a kick but y is double but right? So y ka growth rate zyada hai. Hence, this is how the graph looks like because x a unit bada to y zyada bada gaya. But here, because it is y equals to root x. So x increases at a faster phase than how y increases. So this is how the graph of y square equals to x looks like, but we were only given y equals to root x. So its graph has to be only in the first quadrant. So we will only take the first quadrant wala value and the final graph of y equals to root x will be only this and nothing more. Yeah, I'm sure some of you would have made the mistake. This is the graph of y equals to root x. Then moving further y equals to log x. Uh, we know domain cap domain kya hogi pe? domain has to be x greater than zero. So graph has to be like this x equals to one pe y is zero x one se bada to y will be positive and x if it is less than one uh, y will be negative. So this is how the graph of y equals to log x look like looks like okay. Next is y is equals to e to the power x. I know when x is tending to minus infinity y is zero when x is zero y is e to the power zero equals to one and when x is infinity y is basically infinity. So this is how the graph of y equals to e to the power x looks like last is y equals to mod x. I've already explained this to you in the functions topic that this is how the graph of y equals to mod x looks like. So tell me your score. There were nine graphs. Everyone, I want answers from everyone. What is your score on a scale of nine? How many questions were correct? Okay. Those who are saying seven or eight, Abhishek six, which one was wrong? I'm sure y equals to log and mod x. Oh, what will be the graph of y equals to log mod x? Uh, y equals to root x was slightly challenging, but uh, is it clear now Rishika, Abhishek and everyone else who has gotten any of it wrong? Are you clear now on how do we plot graphs? If not, abhi pooch lo because subsequent slides are going to be at a higher level. Yes, Kalyan. And you have to answer me log x and e to the power x are essentially inverse functions. So they have to be symmetric about y equals to x. 
if you remember i have told you in the inverse functions ki inverse functions are symmetric about y equals to x how do we calculate inverse functions y equals to log x step number 1 is represent x in terms of y x is equals to e to the power y then replace x by y and y by x so this is nothing but y equals to e to the power x hence inverse function of y equals to log x is y equals to e to the power x hence if you see ye jo graphs hai they are symmetric about y equals to x so this is a very very important concept of shifting the graphs right i have i think i've mentioned everyone to read about what is meant by shifting the graphs and try not to use uh like you know plotting by values wala method that is of course one method but now we have to uh learn the deep concepts of graphs so try not to use plotting method ki value dal dal ke check kar rahe ho just understand you all know the graph of y equals to mod x so if you know y equals to mod x y equals to mod x plus 3 kya hoga mod x minus 3 kya hoga what will be this and what will be that see it was a like you did not even have to guys plot multiple graphs for this ye ek graph se ho jata hai so see y equals to mod x is this right let me just change the color uh i'll take blue theek hai so now mod x plus 3 ka kya matlab hai essentially mod x ka jo graph hai you essentially you essentially are shifting that graph by 3 units up right because it is plus 3 to jo bhi graph hai usko 3 unit upar shift karne ka hai to 3 unit agar upar shift karoge so this is 0 Zero will basically shift to plus three, and this entire graph will just shift up. So you will just draw these parallel lines, and this is what is the graph of mod x plus three. Okay, slope will be one, and this is the graph of mod x minus three. With the same logic, mod x minus three will be shifting this graph by three units on the negative y-axis downside. So this is what is the graph for. y equals to mod x minus 3 another important concept to note here is see yahan pe slope kitna hai what is the slope of this line it's 1, one right theek hai it is 1 what do we mean by slope what is slope dy by dx yeah or dy by dx what is dy by dx rate of change of y with respect to x right so can i write this as dy is equals to dx or delta y is equals to delta x so if you can visualize it in a very conceptual manner this is nothing but rate of change of y is equals to rate of change of x is this clear to everyone if slope is one rate of change of y is essentially equals to rate of change of x so if you are shifting this graph down by 3 unit this point will also shift right by 3 units why because slope is one so this point is nothing but plus 3 and this point is nothing but minus 3 see i'm sure you all can calculate it manually that mod x minus 3 is 0 so mod x equals to 3 so x is equals to plus minus 3 but i want you guys to understand this logic as well that because slope is 1 and if you're shifting the graph down by 3 units the right and the left side points will also shift by 3 units and hence it has to be 0 to 3 and 0 to minus 3 and we will actually use this concept in some of the advanced questions so is this clear that if i'm shifting the graph down by a unit this will also shift by a unit why because delta y is equals to delta x this is just the definition of slope okay so we have covered first we have covered second we have covered third now is i'll change the color um big black Yeah, this is y is equals to mod of x plus three. So, who can tell me what is the meaning of this graph? See, mod x plus three was shifting up, right? Here, you are just shifting the zero. What do we mean by zeros? That earlier x equals to zero was the zero here because when you put x equals to zero, y is zero. But now you have to put x equals to minus three to arrive at zero, right? so which essentially means that your zero has been shifted towards left so pehle x equals to 0 pe 0 tha ab x equals to minus 3 pe 0 hoga right so it is nothing but shifting the entire graph towards left hand side by 3 units so this entire graph will just shift here by 3 units so this is going to be the zero and this is how will be the graph of mod 
x plus 3. Similarly, mod of x minus 3 is shifting the zeros by plus 3 units. So this entire graph will just shift towards right by 3 units. And this is how the graph of mod of x minus 3 will look like. Right. And because this is shifted by three units, the, the, the positive value will also shift by three units using the same concept of slope. So they will actually intersect the y axis at y equals to plus three. I know it's, it's not very clear, but I've tried to explain it verbally. You can ask if there are any doubts here. It's a very important concept. Okay. So this is the conclusion of whatever we have learned so far. If y is equal to, yeah. Uh, so when the graph is symmetric about both uh, y and x axis, uh, then the graph is y is equal to mod f of x or y is equal to f of mod x. So see, matlab, do not try to by heart these things always see, see if it is y is equals to mod of fx, right? Say for example, graph was y equals to x plus three. Right, this was fx. So f of mod x kya hoga? It will be mod x plus 3. And mod of fx kitna hoga? It will be mod of x plus 3, right? So now try to visualize and then arrive at the whatever conclusions you want to arrive. So f of mod x is nothing but up x ki jage minus x daloge. So value will not change, right? So x ki jage minus x may value will not change. So it has to be symmetric about y axis. But if you say mod of fx, it is basically y equals to minus y pe value change ni hogi. So it has to be symmetric about x axis. So just always try to visualize it by taking some example. Okay. So this is what is the conclusion of uh, this graph, this slide and concept is if you are able to plot a graph, say y equals to of x, like always in terms of your graphs, try to first of all, plot the very basic graph, which is very easy. And once you have done it, then try to shift it up or down basis, whatever is given in the question. So y equals to fx plus k will shift the graph by k units towards positive y axis minus k will just shift it down. Then y equals to f of x plus k will shift it towards left and x minus k will shift it towards right. This is nothing but replica of whatever we have done. Clear? Okay. If it's clear, next slide is just a concept which we have already covered. You all have already uh, drawn these two graphs and uh, can all of you try to visualize that these graphs are actually symmetric about one line, which is that line. So this is symmetric about y equals to x and why is this happening? This is happening because these are the inverse functions and I've already explained it in the functions topic that inverse functions are essentially symmetric about y equals to x. So this is the same concept. Then let's take an example of odd function. You have to tell me what is this function symmetric about? I've already explained that odd functions are symmetric about something. What is that? And try to validate it using this example. See, uh, Simran, you mentioned y axis, right? Let's assume that this is symmetric about y axis. If it is symmetric about y axis, shouldn't graph be like, you know, whatever the graph is here, it has to be here, right? Then only it will be symmetric about y axis. And if it is the case, isn't this even function? Because even function is f of x is equals to f of minus x, right? So what I'm saying is whatever is the value of my function at x, the same value comes if I just replace x by minus x. So this has to be the case of even function. But what is odd function? Odd function is fx is equals to minus f of minus x, right? So what I mean is whatever is the value at x positive, if x is negative value basically comes down because it is minus of f of minus x. So this is f of x. So f of minus x will be this, and this will be minus of f of minus x, right? So it has to be symmetric about origin. So even if you plot this graph, this is nothing but this, right? So we can see this graph is not symmetric about y axis, right? Because had it been symmetric about y axis, I must have had, uh, 
graph like this because it is symmetric about y axis but because this is not symmetric so graph comes like this and if we see this is symmetric about origin everyone clear with this logic i think this is just a repetition of what we have already done that odd functions are symmetric about origin